Multi-table poker tournaments are a ton of fun. It's not a surprise that they've helped make poker so popular around the globe. The fields are so gigantic though, you might be a little suspicious that just the luckiest player ends up winning. And while it is true that luck is required to make a final table and eventually pull down the win, skill does predominate in the long run. And to prove that, we'll take a look at the results of one of the most famous online MTT players. His name's Sean Deeb. We'll look at his results by the numbers, and then we'll talk a little bit about why we think his results outperform expectations so dramatically. When we say Sean Deeb is a good MTT player, we mean it. Between year 2007 and 2011, over a four-year period, his total profit from playing MTTs online was $1.8 million. That's over $450,000 a year in profit just from online MTTs. So how does he do it? Well, one of his biggest secrets is he plays a very high volume, a lot of games. 20,413 MTTs. Now that stat comes from the two largest poker networks that he played on during that period, but it is almost every MTT he played. The average field size was 1,400 players. Very impressive field size to weave his way through. And the average buy-in was quite high too. He wasn't playing low stakes games. On average, he was paying $135 to enter a 1,400 person MTT. So how did Sean Deeb fare over this four year period? He cashed 13.5% of the time. You could consider par here 10% since most MTTs pay the top 10% of the field. So he's very impressively outperforming the expectation of cashing. He's a full 3.5% over par. How often does he make the final table? 2.3%. The final table is actually where Sean Deeb and some other pros are most impressive. Once they get to the final table, they seem to dramatically outperform expectation. There are nine players at the final table, of course, so you would expect someone to finish in the top three one-third of the time that they get to the top nine. So in Sean's case, 0.8% of the time. But he actually makes the top three a full 1% of the time. How about the win? You would expect the win one-ninth of the time. In Sean's case, that would be 0.25% of the time. But Sean wins a full half percent of his MTTs, double what you would expect. So something's going on here. Sean Deeb just crushes the final table once he gets there. And why would this be? Let's think about it. This is, after all, the greatest source of his $1.8 million in profit. He's only cashing you know, moderately more than expectation. It's his final table performance where he's picking up most of his profit. A simple and fundamental reason why a good MTTer would outperform final tables is he or she arrives at the final table with a big stack. It might sound a little obvious, but it's critical. If you make the, the top nine with more than one ninth of the chips, you have a big edge. You're gonna place higher than ninth, probably do pretty well in the tournament. So it's easier said than done though. How do we get to that position as an MTT player? The secret probably lies in how you play the mid stages of the poker tournament. Let's draw a graph where the x-axis is your finishing place in the tournament. At the far right, we have first place, and then at the origin, we have you bust first in the entire field, and in between every other possible spot. We'll write a benchmark for a min cash and a benchmark for making the final table. Now, a normal poker player's results might look something like this. They make a bunch of exits before the cash, and then sometimes they cash, and the bigger caches are less and less frequent. Maybe they make a few final tables in their poker career, and they have exactly one win. 
let's take a look at Sean Deeb's curve here. It might actually look pretty much the same at the beginning, but then we would expect that he's actually making moderate sized caches less frequently. He's setting himself up to enter final tables with more chips and win more often than the average player. So somehow he's giving up value in the mid stages of the tournament and in exchange getting this huge edge at the final table. What's likely going on with Sean as well as other pro MT tiers is they're willing to take smaller edges than the average player in the mid stages. They're willing to take coin flips for their entire stack, push 60 versus 40 edges. They want a big stack as they get to the final three tables and then the final table to give themselves a chance to win because after all, the payout structure is always top heavy. Most of the money is in the top three spots. The average amateur, of course, doesn't think that way and pays attention to the pay ladder and cares a lot about moving up slowly. They also don't appreciate the role that luck has in these middle stages of the tournament between the cash and the final table. They don't accept the reality that you do have to take a few coin flips and win them to put, your in, put yourself in position to make a deep run. How else does Sean Deeb or another pro MT tier get such a big edge at the final table? Well, of course, they have more experience. They have an experience edge. After all, if you're playing 5,000 MTTs per year and seeing 465 final tables over a four-year period, you're going to be pretty used to the final table. You'll be comfortable there. You'll know how the average player plays them, and you'll know how to exploit their tendencies. Finally, rather counterintuitively, a good MT tier has excellent three-handed and heads-up skills. Like we said before, most of the money is concentrated in the top three spots, and the biggest pay jumps in the entire tournament are from three down to two and two down to one. You'd much rather have great three-handed and two-handed skills than seven, eight, six, five, and four-handed skills because the money is so heavily weighted in the top three spots. Some other softer benefits that might help a uh, great regular professional MT tier is image. If the average player at the table recognizes you're great, they're probably going to avoid you, not play back at you as much. Uh, you'd also have a benefit in sleep schedule. If you're playing an MTT final table late Sunday night, early Monday morning, and the other people at the table have to go to work the next day. They woke up at a normal time on Sunday, so they're, they're already tired, they wanna go to bed. But you do this every three days. It, it just feels like dinner time to you. Maybe you're even eating dinner, playing the table. You're not tired, you're not gonna to go to bed for another two or three hours, it's a huge edge. And of course, you're not quite as risk averse. If you're like Sean Deeb, seeing a final table every three days, you're not worried about getting all your money in with a 60-40 edge you're gonna, in some sense, hit the long run. Whereas an amateur, this might be the only final table of his career, so he's gonna be trying to move up the pay ladder. And of course, third or second place might be an entire year's salary for him. We took a look at Sean Deeb in this video, not to convince you that you should become like him or he's the be and end all of MTT play. We wanted to show that luck is important, but skill predominates. And to become a good MTT player, you should play a high volume, and then you should play the mid stages, mid to late stages very aggressively, accepting the luck, the role that luck does play. Keep watching Beanstalk videos, practice MTTs, either online or live, build your volume, and pretty soon, hopefully, you'll see deeper and deeper caches, and you'll get closer to that overall goal of finishing first in an MTT.